Welcome to Creative Living, where we help you live your most creative life. I'm Jane Manzuras. Today we're talking about cool ways to have fun this summer. But first, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. Life hacks that will help you survive the dog days of summer. A cool craft that's definitely at the head of the class. And we take a field trip to the bottom of the Grand Canyon for an amazing adventure. That and so much more on this episode of Creative Living. I'm with Dawn DeVries Sokol, and she is an author and an artist and an expert at doodling. Yes, I said doodling, but we will get to that <laughs> in just a second, Dawn. It's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk about doodling and drawing in just a little bit, but you started your career as an art director. Yeah, I started in newspapers, and I started to design pages there, and then I got into magazines and eventually book design uh, that I was able to do at home by myself. And um, I kind of fell into the author thing through that. So you're doing all of that design work. And when you're an art director, you're sort of designing the pages. Yeah, and you're also directing the illustrators and the photographers, kind of um, deciding what artwork is going to go with what story, that kind of thing, styles and all that kind of stuff. But then you became an illustrator. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm in the process of becoming an illustrator. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's been difficult because I never was really able to draw. And <laughs> I grew up thinking that I couldn't draw, and I just didn't have the natural talent so that some people do. So sometimes you just have to practice, and I, that's what I've been doing. I mean, it is unbelievable to me to hear you say, I didn't think I could draw, because you have authored so many books to inspire people to bring out that artist within. Yeah. So lots and lots of people say, I can't draw. Well, you know, art isn't just about drawing. And, and just because if you can't draw, like Michelangelo or something, you know, the realistic kind of drawing. Um, you should think that you're not an artist. That's just, it's, you know, it's not true. So what would you say to those people besides the fact, I know you're not Michelangelo, what, what kind of tips would you give them to say, you know what, maybe you can draw? Um, I would say if you have passion for it, if you really want to do it, then it will happen. Um, you just have to really sit down and do it and practice, just like anything else. If you want to play a musical instrument, you have to practice. Um, it's the same kind of thing. Right, it doesn't just come to you by osmosis right. while you're sleeping. Some people <laughs> does. Some people have that natural built-in talent, like my brother did. Mm -hmm. um, they can just draw naturally and, and it, you know, it, it's there from the start. But others, you know, we, I think we all can draw. I think we are all creative. I, I agree with you. Let's talk about doodling, because you're an expert doodler. You've written books about doodling. Why is doodling important? Um, doodling isn't drawing. Um, a lot of people think it is, but it's not. Doodling is more of a meditative type of, of creating. Um, it also, uh, you, just, you just kind of have to sit down and, and let your mind go. Um, there are different ways that you can help along that process. And um, it's not like you have to be able to draw something precisely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a little bit more free flow kind of thing. So. I love that. Okay, so we're going to doodle. You're going to come back in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Dawn is going to show us how to doodle with purpose. Yes. Nothing says summer more than a road trip. And if you're a wine lover, we've got a great destination that you may not have thought of. Verde Valley, Arizona. Cottonwood, Arizona is the heart of Arizona wine country. Cottonwood has a lot of uh, history to it. This area that we're in in Old Town uh, used to be known as a bootlegging community way back. And uh, there's a lot of history here. Uh, townspeople uh, have a lot of tradition. They love their community. And this area down here has turned into a, a, a beautiful area. With, we have 12 or 13 really good restaurants down here and a lot of nice little retail shops and boutique shops. Some of our boutique hotels down here, um, they're as nice as any resort you'll find in Phoenix. We're surrounded in Old, in old Town by uh, wineries, other tasting rooms, other boutique businesses all over the Verde Valley. We just happen to be the heart of the Verde Valley in the heart of the Arizona wine industry. So it, it has a lot to do with the weather and the temperature. It, unlike Phoenix, 
it cools down at night. So it's warm during the day, it cools down during the evening, and that's a great environment for growing grapes. Uh, there's so much to see, not, not just in Old Town Cottonwood, but you know, throughout the whole area, you know, you can add in Camp Verde and Clarkdale and Jerome and Sedona. What's not to like about it? It's just so beautiful. And people will just look at our community and they go, it's a hidden treasure, it's a hidden gem. And so we're, you know, getting the word out and letting people know that if they want to get out of town for a day or a weekend or a week, come on up to Cottonwood and uh, you'll have a great time. I mean, it's, it's such a relaxing, laid back place. I notice when people come here that their blood pressure goes down. Just a lot to offer in our community. If you're looking for some free or low cost family activities this summer, check out your local park district. Many park districts offer activities like kayaking, playmobiles, and even movie nights for the family. Just check the park district's website for details. Coming up on Creative Living, a craft room crash with the crafty Chica, and summer hacks that will make your life a little bit easier. She's the queen of crafting, the crafty Chica, and I got to crash her craft room for a very clever paper craft that's also very festive. This is Craft Room Crash, and I'm outside Kathy Cano Murillo's house. Now, she's also known as the Crafty Chica, and she considers her style Mexi Boho with a lot of sparkles. So, let's go crash her craft room and find out what Kathy is making today. Hey, Kathy! Hi, Jean! Oh my gosh, are you ready to get your craft on? I am ready, Crafty oh Chica! Oh my God, let's go! Oh. Look at it, it's so bright and beautiful and so much fun. It's really spacious. Hi, I'm Kathy Conamurillo, the Crafty Chica. I make a living sprinkling glitter and gluing things. So you have all of your like craft room addictions in here, I would say. Yes, I like to think of it as Mexi Boho style. And it's a combination of everything of my heritage, of my life, of things that I love. They're just all mishmashed together into a fun bohemian style. The Mexican style is glitzy, over the top, so extra. <laughs> so what are we making today? Okay, we are going to make a really fun pocket book. Oh, cute! Made out of a piece of poster board. No a way. A large piece of poster board. Kathy, there's nothing I like more than a nice, clean, white piece of paper. Yes. So much opportunity, right? Yes. First, we're going to take one sheet of this poster board and we're going to complete a series of folds. And then we're going to fold this bottom part up like this. Oh, I see what you're doing here. From there, we're going to snip at the peak of the fold in the center. And then I this is the doing. best part. You're going to love this part. Okay. Okay, fold the, the two pages around so that it creates a book and then like that. Oh my gosh, it's magic! And we're gonna scotch tape the ends together so it stays nice and secure. After that, we're gonna use a glue stick and line it with scrapbook paper. So I'm just gonna roll this. Does this have me feel like you're the second grader in class and you're doing really the easiest project ever and you're still cheating with your neighbor? And you're like, how, <laughs> how am I doing What this? am I doing? And then we're going to trim all the edges with washi tape. And I love the text and the fonts because it just adds a, a little extra Wow, texture. look at yours. And then we're gonna add embellishments like pictures or gems, just to give it some pop. Kathy, you're so awesome. Thank you for having us. I'm never leaving. Thanks so much to Kathy, the crafty chica. Now we all know how to make a folded pocketbook. And that is what Kathy is doing in her craft room. What are you doing in your craft room? I'll see you next time. <laughs> okay, I need to get busy and finish this.
We are back with Don DeVries Sokol. And Don, you're going to show us how to doodle. And so many of us doodle without even knowing about it. Right. But you've got some really great tips on how to start doodling. Yeah, because you may look at the plate page and kind of be, you know, fumbling, not really sure where yeah, to start. Yeah, lost in it. Um, so basically, um, you, can, you can start by dividing your page into sections mm -hmm. and just doing some wavy lines and then, you know, filling those in as you go. Um, you can also do some shapes that you like, shapes that are your favorites. Do you want to jump I do. in of with your pen? Of course I want Because I can tell I you're ready to go. I love the doodle. Um, and then um, you can also repetitively go over lines and just continuously refine your lines, refine your shapes. Um, join those, right, join those circles together. Um, you can play an album or a movie and listen to that in the background and kind of pull out quotes or different things from the movie or the album that really kind of, you know, talk to you and resonate with yeah, you. Yeah, or even just kind of let the moment of the movie or the moment of the music speak to you. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I and I do happen to do a lot of quotes and lettering in my in my doodling. So, so lettering can hand. be part of doodling. Oh, exactly. Not just yeah. like shapes and yeah, dimension. Yeah, because you can make your, you can make your your letters, you know, like really fun, and you don't have to really know how to draw to do that. You know, just think about what the letter's gonna look like in the mm -hmm. shape, and just, you know, going over it, repeating, you know, oh, just yes. repetitively is um, really the key. Are there any rules to doodling? No, no rules. It's all about what you want it to be. It's all about your hand putting ink or color on the paper and making your own. So literally anybody can do it all. Yeah, literally anyone. Anytime, anywhere. anywhere. Yes, that's the great thing about it. It's very mobile. Now I noticed that I'm using this awesome marker. Are mm -hmm. there certain tools that we need to have? Oh well, you can just use. You can even use a ballpoint pen oh. in just a regular white, you know, sketchbook. Mm -hmm. But there are different things that you can use. You can use colored pencils, and you can use. Um, um, you know, markers, you can use paint markers. There are all kinds of things out on the market that you can, you know, try and see what you like. Right. Why is doodling such a great creative outlet? Um, I think it's because it just, it gets you started. It gets you going um, with creating. Um, it's your own hand. You are kind of the master of the page and, you know, the master of whatever you're doodling. And it's just, um, it's easy. Anyone can do it. You also, if you're listening to a lecture and you're doodling, you tend to retain more of that um, information than you would if really? you were just standing, sitting there listening. Yes. So it's it's great for the mind, and um, you know it really opens a lot of creative doors. I think. Thank you so much for hanging with me. You're so fun. <laughs> sure. Thanks. If you want more information on Dawn, her books, or even her workshops, just go to her website. We've got a lot more to come on Creative Living. Stick around. A trip to one of the seven wonders of the world that will leave you speechless. And graduation season is here, and I have a craft that will help you preserve the memory forever. to one of the most beautiful places you'll ever see, Havasupai Falls at the Grand Canyon. Hi, I'm Chris Anderson and I'm with Arizona Outback Adventures. Here at Arizona Outback Adventures, we specialize in guided adventure tours across the West. Um, one of the places that we started in and one of our most popular is Havasupai. And um, going down there is really a pretty magical experience. It combines uh, some of the amazing parts of the Grand Canyon and things that people are used to, hiking in the desert, seeing these amazing rock formations and layers. But then you're also down on a Native American Indian reservation. You get to learn a little bit about their culture, their history, um, and see what that's about. And then you have a special place that's uh, unlike many in the world, and you've got these gorgeous turquoise blue-green waterfalls, um, some of them up to 200 feet high, and it's just a paradise. You get to hike, you get to play, you get to swim, Swim, and you really get to feel kind of like an explorer or adventurer and you get to kind of find this magical place in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. 
So if you're gonna go down to Havasupai, there's some things you need to know. Um, it is really remote. Um, even the trailhead is an hour from even the nearest simple motel or gas station. Um, it's about a four and a half hour drive from Phoenix, about a four hour drive from Las Vegas. And so um, it really takes a while just to get there. Um, and to go on the Indian reservation there and to go down to Havasupai, you do need a permit. You can't just go down and show up, they will turn you around. Once you get up there, it's a 10 mile hike in and it's a pretty challenging hike. You don't really get to any kind of civilization, water or village for eight miles. And then you've got another two miles to hike down into the campground. Um, you're camping down there. There are um, really nice restrooms. There's drinking water available. Um, but other than that, there's not too many amenities for you, which kind of makes camping nice. You get to pick a spot, be by the creek, and really enjoy yourself for those days. We highly encourage you um, to get your permits, find your travel information, and plan your trip all directly with the Havasupai Tribe. Uh, you can contact them on their website, theofficialhavasupaitribe.com, and they'll have all of your information ready there for you to plan your trip. If all of the logistics and planning and all of that just sounds overwhelming, that's one of the places where a guided trip really comes in. Here at AOA, we provide everything for you from start to finish. Um, you don't have to think about a single thing other than training yourself and showing up. So we already have the permits available for you. Our guides here are all trained in how to operate the trip. They've spent a number of years down there, as well as having really high level uh, outdoor wilderness medical certifications. That guide is also going to plan, prepare, pack, bring and cook all of your meals, all of your snacks for the entire trip so you don't even have to think about that part as well. They're going to set you up with one of the best camping locations so that um, you have the best experience while you're camping. All you got to do is show up with a good attitude and have a great time. It's summertime and that means a lot of outside time, which can lead to some pretty sticky, messy and sometimes itchy situations. So these simple life hacks will keep you living smart all summer long. First, those mosquitoes can be really annoying, but you can use dryer sheets to stop the bugs. You see, dryer sheets actually mask the human scent that attracts mosquitoes in the first place. So just put dryer sheets in a cup or decorative flower pot outside and you'll be bug free. Now, if you do get bit, you can stop the itch by applying toothpaste. Yeah, toothpaste really helps ease the itch. Just dab a little on the bite and ah, instant relief. Okay, if you're like me, summer is the time for berry picking. And aside from leaving with a bushel of berries, you'll probably also leave with berry stained fingers. And since soap and water doesn't always do the trick to get rid of the stain, Try washing your hands with lemon juice instead. Then wait a few minutes, rinse with warm water, and you've got stain-free fingers. So go ahead, get messy. Enjoy eating a few berries as you go. And speaking of messy, the summertime popsicle treat can leave your tots fingers stained too. You can use a cupcake wrapper to keep the mess away. Just cut a slit in the bottom and put your popsicle stick through the slit. It keeps that drippy, sticky mess off their fingers and probably a few t-shirts too. Now we all know one of the worst parts of summer is getting a sunburn. So a remedy to find relief fast is to put some aloe vera gel into an ice cube tray and freeze it. And when you need it, gently rub the cube on your burnt skin. The cold is soothing on the burn and the aloe vera will help the healing process and prevent peeling. Just be sure to freeze them ahead of time, just in case you get a little overexposed. And finally, one of the best things about summer is the cookout. And of course the grill is gonna get dirty, but no worries, aluminum foil can help. Just lay a sheet of aluminum foil over the grates while the coals are still hot and close the lid. And the next time you grill, crumple up the aluminum foil and rub off the burnt bits. It's clean and you're ready for the next barbecue. I love that. And there you have it, a few great creative life hacks to help you enjoy every second of the summer. Coming up next, a craft that earns straight A's when it comes to creativity and a way to preserve those summer memories. Game time on your view, Thursdays and Fridays at 7 p.m.
Graduation day has come and gone. You did it, but now what are you going to do with your cap and gown? Well, instead of turning it into a shadow box, let's turn your graduation gown into something useful. Are you ready? Let's get started. You'll need your graduation gown, a university t-shirt, a pillow form, and a sewing machine. The tassel is optional. If you're using a 16-inch pillow, cut the top of your gown into a 17-inch square. Cut a square the same size from your university t-shirt. Use a piece of fabric from the gown remnants to fill in the v-neck section of the gown and sew it in place. Open the zipper of the gown just a little bit and with the right sides together, sew the square all the way around and be sure to clip the edges. With the front zipper of the gown all the way open, turn the new pillow cover right side out. Insert your pillow and zip up the gown. And you can add the tassel from your cap as a cool pull to the zipper. And there you have it, a great way to upcraft your graduation gown and turn it into memorable dorm decor. I want to thank Don DeVries Sokol for helping us get our doodle on. Here's a quick summer activity to help you preserve those summertime memories. Make a snow globe. First, you'll need a clear jar. Grab an object that reminds you of summer like a seashell or trinket. Hot glue it to the inside of the jar lid. Fill your jar with distilled water to the top and add one tablespoon of glycerin and two teaspoons of glitter. Screw the lid on tightly and there you go, summer in a jar. Thanks so much for joining us here on Creative Living. I'm your host, Jane Monzuris, and I'll see you next time.